This is the Franchise QB Podcast, where we empower entrepreneurs to win big in franchising. We huddle up weekly to educate our audience about the most successful small business model ever created, franchising. Welcome to the Franchise QB Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Halpern, a 20-year industry veteran and entrepreneur. My mission is for listeners to achieve their American dreams of creating wealth and independence through franchise ownership. Every week, we speak with franchisees, franchisors, or vendors that support the industry. Thank you for joining us, and let's get started. Joining us in the huddle today is Dustin Engel, CEO of Insulation Commandos. Welcome to the show, Dustin. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you inviting me on. Yeah, great to have you. So from 2002 to 2012, you served our country in the U.S. Army as an infantryman and squad leader. So first and foremost, thank you for uh, your service to our great country. And then you and I met when we were uh, when you were at Belfour. So you were the director of development working on ChemDry and some other brands. Um, I really would love to hear and I think the audience would like to hear your story. How did you find your way? into franchising after your military service? And then subsequently, how did that lead you to uh, becoming the CEO of Insulation Commandos? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, I'll give you the the Cliff Notes version. So um, got out of the military, like you said, 2012, um, served 10 years in the infantry. Um, when I got out, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, man. I just, I kind of fell into home services, you know, just my background, okay. part of the military. Um, Got into home services, and I was stationed at Fort Campbell, Kentucky when I got out of the military, which is about an hour from Nashville, and so I kind of gravitated towards Nashville. I met my wife here. She's from Nashville, so okay. I ended up staying here and uh, just fell into doing contract work. I, I started off doing renovations and restoration work, roofing, siding, uh, water damage, you know, that kind of stuff, and um Built a pretty pretty decent sized business. Um, did that for about five six years, and uh, a good buddy of mine, Aaron Harper, who you know, uh, called me up mm-hmm. one day and was like, "Hey man, why don't you close your business and um, come do franchise development with me?" And I was like, "Aaron, what's franchising? I don't even I don't even know what you're talking about. You're <laughs> talking about McDonald's." And so that was kind of my intro to franchising is. Uh, after having a few conversations with him and then kind of understanding, um, you know, the nuts and bolts of it, um, I dove in. And so I, I joined, uh, Aaron with, uh, Kim dry. So I was the franchise development director for Kim dry for, for a few years and kind of got my feet wet with that brand, uh, which Kim dry has been around for 45, 46 years. So it's, it's a good brand to start with. And, so got my yeah, feet, it's got like a thousand owners. That. It's a pretty big system. Yeah, it's a huge, huge brand. Um, and then I and then I transitioned into a, a, a younger emerging brand, the Patch Boys. Um, I did that for a year and a half. Um, learned the back ends of that, and so it's pretty interesting, just kind of learning the franchise model and how to scale a big system and and some of the really just the technology and the things on the back end that help scale a system to that, that level, you know, you don't, you don't learn that. Yeah. It's cool that you had experience with like a bigger system and then also with like an an emerging brand. So you kind of got both sides of it while you're getting educated about the space. Yeah. So, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, man, I wish I had known this when I was running my business. So these are some things that I could have done to help scale my business, you know? And so I, that's why I saw the value in franchising and uh, you know, and then, Belfour had had recently acquired a Safer Home Services, which is a pest control franchise that um, mm-hmm. they launched last year. And so I, I started doing the development for that brand and uh, ultimately made the decision last year to to leave Belfour and to launch Insulation Commandos last year. And then to back up about 18 months, um, give you kind of a bigger picture. So one of my really good army buddies, known him for 22 years now at this point. We invaded Iraq together in 2003, served together. Um, he He's a Los Angeles guy, California guy, and he he owned an insulation company there in LA with, uh, with his okay. partner, Mike Malloy. Um, so those two 
running that flagship location in LA. Um, Mike Malloy, who's his partner there in, in LA, he owns an HVAC company that does, he did 16 million last year with that HVAC company. And then he has nice. a solar business that he's had for a few years, does six, seven million a year with that business. And, um, and then they had the insulation business, which he had kind of been, he hadn't really, really been focusing on growing it. He just kind of had it as a division of the solar company, you know? So originally it wasn't its own company. It was part of his solar company where they would, right. they would go in, they would do their solar panels. And then afterwards they would come in and, and backfill some insulation, do some upgrading in the attic just to kind of help with the energy uh, efficiency of the home. So that was kind of how it all came to, came to be. And um, we, you know, we partnered up last year and, and launched in October as a franchise. And we are, um, we're at 14, 14 franchises as of today. Um, five open and we've got a big group onboarding right now that'll be launching in may i love it man that's awesome yeah it's really cool that you were able to kind of find a buddy of yours that you know goes back a long ways and you guys went through you know some really big stuff together you know overseas in iraq and you still have that relationship and he's crushing it with his business and you have all this kind of franchise expertise and you kind of marry those two things and it's could be a really great kind of business partnership. So let's transition and talk a little bit about your brand. Um, insulation and Commandos, bringing military precision to insulation. You can tell that you guys have done your homework in terms of branding, and we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but uh, let's talk about the bigger picture. So um, you guys call it the home performance industry. So what is it? What's the market size? Tell us about the, the space you guys compete in. Yeah, so home home performance industry is just it's a niche part of the home improvement space, you know. So anything anything that's going to help a home run more efficiently is going to be kind of in that niche space. So solar, tankless hot water heaters, programmable thermostats, insulation. Uh, they're making they're making carpet. They're making low e carpet these days. I mean, they're they're wow. Uh, just anything that's going to conserve energy, you know. That's that's right. the big focus with with that space and so insulation specifically it's about a 10 billion dollar industry big industry okay. um and then it's pacing to, to double over the next 10 years so it's it's a good space to be in and then within that um our niche is retrofit you know so we're focusing on ex existing homes you know up yeah so i want to get into your services because they're really interesting um so i guess the 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 main takeaway here is that you're promoting energy efficiency and cost savings for the end user. Right. Yeah. There's, there's yeah, been cool. a big push from the government to, to conserve energy. You know, okay. like last year they, uh, they approved 4.3 billion in rebates, state rebates. Nice. And so okay. there's, that's, that's, that's still in the, in the rollout process. And like to give you an example, there's a, the state of Massachusetts, for example, Boston, um, there's a program called Mass Save, and if you if you're upgrading your insulation in your house, the the state rebates will pay for up to seventy five percent of the work. Hmm. And so you know, the homeowners coming out of pocket twenty five percent. And so That's the, awesome. it's very lucrative space, and the government is kind of helping helping push that that industry forward. Yeah. And I'd imagine there's probably tax credits as well if it's uh, kind of the, the right product that's going in. Right. Yeah, there's federal tax credits. There's an incentives. There's, you know, there's grant programs. It's it's kind of that's that's the space. You know, that's the home performance space. Awesome. So let's talk about the specific services that Insulation Commando provides. You mentioned attic retrofit. That's the bread and butter. Um, let's talk about that, and then let's kind of talk a little bit about some of the additional services that an owner can provide to a uh, customer. Yeah, so attics is, like you said, that's our bread and butter. I mean, if we can get in an attic, there's a lot of opportunity to improve the efficiency of that home, you know, and okay. not, not want to go down a rabbit hole with it. But um, basically, you know, what we, what we do is we come in, we, we take out the old insulation, and then we do what's called attic air sealing. And so what we're doing is we're sealing off any any cracks from the ceiling into the attic 
that's going to okay. cause air to leak out of the living space. And so we're sealing that so off. So around the cam lights, around it. kind of the the joists, like wherever you find um, those holes, you, you you patch them up. Yeah. So there's something there's something called stack effect. And so basically, if you have a crawl space uh, home, whenever you that air comes into your crawl space, and then it gets pushed up into your house, and then it gets pushed up into your attic, um, especially when your HVAC unit's running, and you're, you're pumping that air into your house, it's pressure. And so it, it gets sucked into your attic from the, the light fixtures, the cracks, and it ha mm -hmm. the air has to backfill, you know, so it, it's sucking air out of your crawl space into your house. And so the EPA says that 80% of the air that you're breathing in your house is from your crawl space. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you wake up itchy eyes, you know, respiratory issues, a lot of that can be from, from that stack effect. So when we seal off yeah. that attic, we're stopping that stack effect from happening. And so just educating the homeowner on that, um, and, you know, on, on top of attics, you know, there's a lot of other add-ons that we do. So do you find that, like, customers are coming to you because they have, like, HVAC units that are overworked or they just can feel like, you know, hey, there's something we have to do. Our insulation's old. We need an upgrade. Um, I mean, is that generally the, the thing? Because obviously people don't wake up every day and say, hey, I need new insulation. Right. Like, there's a sales component here. Yeah, usually something triggers a customer to call us. And I mean, honestly, we have we have a ton of referrals from HVAC companies. So that's mm -hmm. that's one of our biggest referral partners is HVAC. So, you know, they 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 when you're when you're when it's hot in your house or cold in your house, HVAC unit goes out, you call the HVAC company. They come out, they test your unit, and if it's more than 10 years old, they're just going to replace it. Um, okay. you know, that's how they make their money. And and so it's the same customer. The reason that HVAC unit burned out in the first place was because your attic wasn't sealed properly. Your house wasn't insulated properly. And so if you can get in front of that problem, you know, you can extend the, the life of your HVAC unit. Yeah. So, those yeah, HVAC units lot, lot aren't, HVAC. aren't cheap. I mean, those are 10 grand plus and you want to make sure that they get a full life usage out of them. Um, and the other thing, like beyond that kind of bread and butter service and the air sealing, um, you guys have pest control, radiant barrier, sound mitigation, and things that I'm unfamiliar with, drill and fill insulation and roll and bat fiberglass insulation. So you have a lot of these different services that you guys can tack on uh, and help people solve problems where they don't really know what they need to do. And you guys go in there and evaluate it and provide a great solution for them. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, pest and rodent mitigation, you know, we're in the attic, there's usually signs of rodents, you know, and we're, we're cleaning out the attic and while we're there, we can do a mitigation, you know? So what we're doing is we're basically just putting grates over anything bigger than a fist where maybe a, a mouse or a rat could get in. We're mm -hmm. sealing those off so that they can't get in, you know? And, and that's, that's the extent of it. I mean, we're not doing full blown pest control, but sure. we do install a pest resistant insulation. Um, that's it's basically cellulose insulation that's treated with boric acid, and so it's it's um it's really it's really popular in the pest control companies. They they like to install that. It repels termites and things like that and rodents. So that's kind of the 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 rodent pest side of it. Um, we do drill and fill insulation, which is, you know, that's how we get into an existing wall to insulate it without taking the wall down. So we can, mm -hmm. we can drill our holes between the studs and we can pack insulation in those holes with our equipment, you know, so we okay. do a lot of soundproofing, sound mitigation too. And a lot of it's that. So like Mike, your, your office, um, those interior walls, I don't know if they're, you know, I don't know if you if you have them soundproofed or anything like that. But what we would do is we would come in and those interior walls of your office, we can drill those holes between the studs and we'll pack, pack those walls with rock wool insulation, which is like a really dense, thick, high R value insulation. It's a good sound barrier. And we'll just pack that in the wall and then we plug those holes. And then you're, you're going to need a drywall contractor to come in and patch behind us. Yeah. Um, but now you've soundproof that, that office space. You know, without tearing yeah, no, that sounds 
Trust me, I mean, having a home office, I hear all kinds of noise, so that might not be such a bad idea for my, <laughs> my situation. And I see that you guys, um, you know, also do duct cleaning, and I know that's not the number one service, but it's kind of cool that a franchise owner has all these ancillary services they can provide to help the homeowner and also build revenue. Yeah, yeah, duct cleaning is kind of our, you know, we're already there, and it's 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 a pure profit service. There's no cost of goods with you know, with duct cleaning. So we're already in the home. It's not a lot of time to do it. We're already there. So it's, it's kind of our foot in the door too. You know, we'll do a duct cleaning job and it may turn into a big $10,000 attic job. Yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. So let's um, talk a little bit about the marketing and branding. I've seen the logo. I've seen the, the van. I mean, it's a really impressive look. So tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your partner there, your chief creative officer and how y'all met and, kind of what their role is in the, the process of helping owners come to market with a really sleek look and something that's noticeable. Yeah, that's, that's, I love this question, man. So um, obviously we want, we wanted some type of military ish theme to it, you know, with, with the backgrounds and, you know, you've got, you've got Mike Malloy who is, you know, subject matter expert boots on the ground in LA. He's been doing, doing this his whole life. Um, you know, he's, that's kind of his piece of it. And then Todd Morelli, who, you know, buddy that I've known for 22 years, he's a West Point guy. You know, his last job assignment in the Army was he was an instructor at West Point teaching the modern okay. warfare course, you know. And so he's a very systems oriented, um, structured, you know, so that's just kind of that's Todd. And so when you put those two guys together, you know, you could imagine you know, kind of what you would get in a, in a service business. So that's the best way to describe it. And so we, okay. you know, we wanted that in our branding. We wanted that to show through. And um, there's a guy named Dan Antonelli. And if, if you're in the HVAC industry, you know who he is. He's famous in the HVAC space. There's not an HVAC contractor out there that doesn't know who he is. Um, he's done uh, branding for some big HVAC companies, Gettle, Heating and Air, if you know them. Um, a one garage doors, Tommy Mello. I don't know if you know him, you know, he did all yep. of his, his, his branding. And so we, we wanted, we wanted Dan, you know, so we, Mike with his HVAC company in LA, he made the connection and, um, we told him what we were wanting to do. And, um, Todd flew out to New Jersey to Dan's office. Um, D Dan owns a company called kick charge creative. And so okay. he's got a big team there, uh, 20, 30, People and that's all he does is branding for home service businesses, Got it. and he's been doing. So your your owners business. will have access to their their skill set and their team if they need anything in their local markets. Yeah, so if they you know say we launched in in Miami and the franchise partner there wants to do a big banner for a football game or something like that, we can we can have Dan's team design all of that for us. Or if they want to wrap a, uh, we've got a guy that's wanting to wrap a Z06 right now, a Corvette. You know, so that, those will look pretty slick. So we, we yeah. lean on Dan's team in New Jersey for anything creative branding wise. And so that's okay. kind of what you're seeing with the truck wraps. And, you know, we wanted, we wanted to keep that military theme, but at the same time, we wanted it to look clean and sharp, you know? Yeah. And so Dan's responsible for all that. Got it. Cool, man. Appreciate that. So owner gets in the system. They, they feel like this is something that they're going to be great at with your support. How do you guys generate leads for, for owners when you're a new business coming to market? That's always a question that we get is, okay, you know, what, what are the tactics and techniques that the franchise system is going to coach us through? So how do you guys go into the market and, and get leads for these owners? Yeah. So we, we, we try to, do, we want to do the, the marketing for the franchisee for the first couple months. So okay. within our startup cost, we built in three months of marketing in that startup package. Um, so we take, we take that money and we use that to market for them for the first three months. And so what we're doing month one is we're casting a wide net, you know, I mean, we're, we're going to do our due diligence of that market and figure out what the volumes look like with the different partners that we use for marketing. But really it's, you know, month one, you're, ca you're casting a wide net and we're, we're tracking ROI, you know, so we want to see, we want to see a, a one in six ratio. You know, that's what we consider to be a good lead source. You know, we spend a thousand dollars. We want to generate at least six thousand dollars. So that's that's what we see as a good lead source. 
so month one, you know, we kind of cast a wide net. We do um, not nothing too, you know, too off the top. And we're doing, we're buying leads. We've got um, partners that we work with to to buy leads from. We do Google ads. We do um, organic. We do SEO. You know, we've got an agency out of New Jersey called One SEO, and so they they're they're one they're a big SEO company that specialize in home services. Uh, not yeah. so much in the franchise space, but just, you know, home services. So they, they're they responsible for getting you to the top of Google. You know, so that's kind of the digital side of it. Mm-hmm. And then we're also doing, uh, we, we have a lot of track. We get a lot of traction with, with print postcards. Okay. And so we, we work with a, an agency out of Minnesota called Dope Marketing. And they do, they have software where we can, we can target a neighborhood in a city. And instead of sending out a thousand postcards to the whole neighborhood, we can, we can filter that down and say, let's just send these to the houses that are built before 1990. And oh, that's cool. they're owner occupied and the owner's over 40 years old and the home's over 1800 square foot. And so instead of sending a thousand postcards, we're sending 20, you know, to the exact right. target customer and so yes you don't have to waste money on marketing where it's not really your target audience i like yeah that. so those are just some of the things we do yep and i saw something in um, your materials about how like if someone becomes a customer you're able to target the adjacent homeowners because there's more of a likelihood that they'll be customers as well how does yeah, that so that's so that's with dope marketing also so that's they have an does. integration okay. they have an integration with service titan which is the CRM yep. that we use. Mm-hmm. And so as soon as you complete a job and you change that status to complete, that will trigger a postcard to ma- get mailed out to the, all the houses within whatever radius you want, 300 feet, right. 500 feet. And we send postcards out that basically say, you know, your, your neighbor is upgrading their insulation, your neighbor's saving on energy, you know, something like that. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's, it's meaningful whenever someone nearby does it. It's like, well, I want to do it too, you know? Um, so let's talk a little bit about not just the leads, but obviously referrals become a big part of a business, especially for a new business owner. And a lot of times those relationships will take time to cultivate, but how do you guys help new owners build a strong referral network in their territories? Yeah, we lean on software for that. So we we're using, uh, I, I think this, I think SMA, it's called Smappin. It's a, okay. a French mapping software that they recently just expanded into the U S there's, there's not a lot of franchisors using it yet. I think that's going to change. Um, okay. it's, you know, it's basically what everybody else is using on steroids and mm. you can, you can, you can pull up a territory and you can say, you know, I want an Excel sheet. I want to export every pest control company in this territory. And literally it's integrated with Google puts it in a spreadsheet. Now we have all the names, phone numbers and addresses of every pest control company in Harris County, Houston, and there might be a 1500 of them. And so then we can turn around and market to those pest control companies to build out our referral programs. Cause we, we do a lot of work with pest control companies, HVAC companies, and then drywall, drywall companies. You know, we do a lot with them too. Yeah. But that's how that's we, really cool that's how because... we get the, you know, that's how we build those funnels up for the franchise partner. Yeah. No, it's awesome because, um, you know, you want to have your lead generation techniques, but you also want to have that referral source cranking as well. Because if you get a good one, that can be a huge game changer for the owner. So that, right. that's cool that you guys really encourage that from the outset. So um, you mentioned Service Titan before. I know they're huge in the home services industry. So I'm assuming that you guys have some custom integrations um, that kind of make it unique to an Installation Commandos owner. Yeah, so... We, we, we looked around for, we wanted, we wanted everything under one roof. You know, that was the big challenge. A lot of home service companies is you have, you have QuickBooks, you know, you have to go into QuickBooks to do this. And then you have to go into Jobber to do this. And then you have to go into mm-hmm. this software to run payroll. And so, you know, and then this one for inventory. And so we were, we wanted something under one roof, you know, for everything with open API, you know, integrations and um, service Titan does that. It was, it was built for HVAC companies and plumbing companies. You know, that's kind of what Service Titan is. Um, so we had, to, we had to spend some time with them customizing it, kind of building out a, our own version of it. Um, okay. And that's what we're using. So it, it does just about everything. You know, we, run, we, can, we can run payroll. We can, we can run inventory. You can, you can set it up to where 
when you get below a certain quantity of a SKU, it'll send out a purchase order, you know, mm -hmm. to the distributor. You know, if, to make sure your inventory is replenished and all. Yeah, so it, it'll save yeah, an employee, cool. you know, for sure. Yeah, very neat. So um, let's talk about like customer gets your marketing piece. They're interested. They call up. Is that going to the franchise owner or one of their employees or do you have a call center? What does that look like? We're working with a call center, um, ProNexus. Okay. You're probably familiar with ProNexus. Yeah, they're they're one of the good ones. Yeah, they're they that's all they do is home services. So you know their agents are are well versed in it, and so we we have agents over there that are trained on our business. They have scripts, they know how to overcome rebuttals. They have a around a forty fifty percent booking rate for us. You know, so awesome. so forty fifty percent of the people that they talk to, they're booking an estimate on the on the franchisee's calendar, and so that's just that's one really piece cool. So the franchisee just with. sees it show up on the calendar. And their technician goes out there to uh, kind of provide the estimate. Yeah, starting out, I mean, as a, as a brand new business, I mean, you you just don't have the time to catch all those leads and and follow up with them in a timely manner, you know. And so they they're they're quick. I think their speed to leads like thirteen seconds right now. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about the onboarding process. New owner comes in. What does it look like in terms of training? coaching, support, how does that all kind of uh, go down for a, a new owner? So we have a we have a six to eight week pre-launch program that we call Launchpad. And so that's okay. plugging them in with vendors, teaching them service Titan, insurance, bank accounts, getting their truck, wrapping it, equipment, like all that kind of stuff, recruiting, hiring the staff. Um, that's six to eight weeks pre-launch. Mm -hmm. um, and then once that's complete, we we send them out to Van Nuys, California, which is North LA, to the, the the Van Nuys location, our flagship, and we've got a training hub there where we do five days of training. We do two days in the classroom, and then we go out in the field for three days. So they actually get to go out on job sites, you know, see it live, see what right looks like, um, go out on sales calls, you know. So they get to participate in the business out there for a few days and. And then they, they fly back to their home base and, and then they launch. Very cool. So you mentioned your team before, Todd, Mike, um, also Brock Adams. What's Brock's role in the uh, company? Yeah, so Brock, in my opinion, is what a lot of franchisors are missing. And that's a strong uh, sales training team. You know, okay. I, I just I see that as an opportunity. You know, you can you can spend you know you can spend as much money as you want on marketing, but if you're not converting the leads, you're you're just burning through your cash. So right. Brock's background for the last 20 years has been sales training. Um, he's a he's a psychology major. Um, he's spent 10 years with AT and T, um, running four states for AT and T, um, and then True Green, which is a you know they're an outdoor sales organization. They do lawn care. So yep. he, he ran a big region for, for True Green. Um, so his, his background is driving sales. He's got a sales boot camp that the franchisees can put their, their salesmen through. Um, and just, just driving revenue, you know, supporting the franchisees and driving revenue and converting leads. So that's, that's, yeah, that's, awesome. that's our brand president. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I love that because I mean, at the end of the day, like this is a, a business that knows that sales are so critical to keeping it full, especially until you get those referrals that come in year two, three, four and, and beyond. Yeah. So like looking at it in the eye and saying, we need to be great at training our owners on how to sell, how to best position the product, how to convert those leads into estimates, estimates into jobs, jobs into referrals. Like you can't, you know, that has to be taught. You know, some people right. have an innate skill, but you're giving them a really great benefit by coaching them through what works in a, in a tested kind of proven system. So that's really great. Um, and I do think that's a differentiator for you guys. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the item seven. So in order to get these going, and my information may be from your old FDD, but 171 to 343, um, are we still in that same ballpark? Yeah. And I'm assuming that's the leasing on the vans and kind of upfitting the vans, wrapping them, um, initial marketing package, you said, working capital, initial labor, anything else go in there? And, and yeah, I kind mean, of just just to simplify it, you know, what I what I tell people is, you know, it's, it's around two hundred thousand dollars to get you 
open, you know, for okay. Z. And that's that's including some working capital. So we have a we have a seventy five thousand dollars startup package, and that has everything in it that you need other than the truck. You know, that has your that has your three months of marketing, that has your uniforms, equipment. Um We've got a recruiting agency that does the recruiting for you for the first two months. We've got a bookkeeping agency that does your bookkeeping for six months. We've got an, another company that runs your payroll for you for six months. And basically anything you could think of is in there in the startup package. And then, you know, our franchise fee, obviously, 47.5 for the first territory, 37.5 for other territories. So, you know, all, all in, you're looking at 150, 160,000 plus some working capital of about 30, 35,000. Okay. So two hundred thousand is kind of the simplified answer, you know, up and running. Okay. As far as the truck goes, we're we're leasing. You can buy the truck uh, through Azuzu. We have a fleet program with Azuzu, so we're we're basically just doing leases with the trucks. It makes it a lot easier to to get in and not burn up your cash flow, you know, right out the gate. And you know, when you're ready to add truck two, it's thirteen hundred dollars a month, you know, and you've got another truck. Got it. Very cool. That's great. Um, so let's talk a little bit about earnings. I mean, I know you guys were a newer franchise system. You have a new FDD coming out. Does the, the new one going to have any item 19 in regards to the performance of the Van Nuys shop or, or not yet? Yeah, so we, we filed our 2024 FDD on April 3rd. So it's it's live. Um, we've got an awesome. item 19 in there showing the Van Nuys location for for all of 2023. And it's it's basically a full P and L. It's got your top line revenue. You can see cost of goods. Um, those guys, it, the, that's a that's a two truck operation, and they 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 did just under one point one million. Okay. With two trucks, um, you know they started with one truck and added truck two about six months in, and so mm -hmm. they're they're averaging. You know, if you do the math on when they added the truck, it's it's about six hundred thousand gross revenue per truck. Wow, that's high. So it's got a high, you know, that's one of the, that's one of the big things that I like about this business is, you know, it's a high revenue business. Yeah. Average ticket, their average ticket was $3,800. Um, you know, so you can, you can take a look at the item 19, but yeah, top lines a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I have a lot of candidates that come to me and they're like, I don't want something where my average ticket's like 300 bucks because I do the math and it's like, you need so many trucks and a exactly. lot of labor. I like the idea where your ticket is you know, 3000 plus, that's pretty attractive. That's, that's the challenge. That's the challenging thing with a lot of these brands is, you know, your, your top line is 250,000 with one truck and you're netting 20% of that. I mean, you're going to need three trucks to make hundred thousand dollars to replace your income. Yeah. You know, so with, with us, it's, it's a little quicker, you know, you can replace your income with one truck. Awesome. Well, I can see that this is going to be great for people with, you know, military veterans because of the branding and the, the, the discipline. I know they're great in franchising because their structure and their support. What does your ideal candidate look like for installation commandos? Honestly, it's, you know, I, I agree with you that, you know, military backgrounds a plus. Um, I, I don't think it's, you know, we're, we're not exclusive to veterans. I don't think that's part of the profile. Um just somebody that, that wants to come in and grow a business, somebody with a vision that wants to grow a big business, um, come in and be aggressive. And the one word I would use is dominant. You know, we want people that are dominant and they want to come in and own a market. And mm -hmm. so we're, you know, we're, we're not, we're not wanting to, you know, someone to come in and get a little piece of Dallas. We want somebody that's going to come in and, and own that city, you know, and that's, that's kind of who we're looking for, you know, aggressive, dominant, personalities and sales is big, you know, sales background mm -hmm. goes a long way in this kind of business. Yeah. Someone that's got like a real good history of um, business development and sales, but they've been doing it for someone else. And they're like, Hey, I'm going to take my shot and, you know, have something that's structured that I can get behind and, and kind of, and crush it. Like that's, that's yeah. a good person for you. Agreed. Cool. So uh, you shared a lot uh, about the uh, the brand with us. Anything else you want to add to the mix before we wrap up? No, man, that's pretty much it. I can give you some some hot markets. You know, I don't know if they'll, yeah, please they'll do. be the same when they, when you know when they're watching the video. But um, <laughs> man, we're 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 targeting Dallas. That's a great market for us. Um, Massachusetts, Boston has has a great rebate program right now. Um, guys out there are crushing it so we would love to have somebody in boston 
Philadelphia is another one. A lot of old houses in Philadelphia. You know, those are mm-hmm. markets that we target. Um, Atlanta, you know, the, the big one, you know, those are kind of our, our, our hit list right now. Yeah, very cool. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. Well, if anyone listening would like to connect with Dustin and his team to discuss installation commandos, contact me at FranchiseQB.com or on Twitter at QB, FranchiseQB. I'll get you guys connected. Thank you, Dustin, so much for taking the time to get in the huddle and speak with us today about installation commandos. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Franchise QB podcast, where you're at the helm of your future as a franchise owner. If you enjoyed the content, please rate the show and recommend it to anyone that might be interested in franchising. Make sure to visit FranchiseQB.com to subscribe to my newsletter and for an actionable playbook to go from walk-on to legend in your new business. Follow us on Twitter at QB Franchise QB and join us every week for a new episode. See you next time. Visit FranchiseQB.com to take the next step of your journey towards wealth, independence, and franchise ownership. And remember, when working for the man gets old, you must do something bold. Thank you for listening.